Yeah, that's, well, but it seems to go on for a period of time. I mean, a lot of times people tell me stories about that, whether it's course groups or relationships or job situations, where they, they almost feel, they start to feel a bit like a doormat or like whatever they're doing is, something's not working because there's still a sense of frustration, there's not a sense of transcendence. And it's not just me, I'm just saying, yeah. do other people feel the same? So. Yeah. So, well for me, one thing that helped me early on, you know, I did do it individually, so to speak, then with, with groups, but the Spirit, one time it just was, for quite a long time, the Spirit was like a broken record. It was just, I kept hearing it over, it's your lesson, it's your lesson, yeah. it's your lesson, it's your lesson. <laughs> I said, but, 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 <laughs> it's your lesson, it's your lesson. You know, it was like really coming home strong. And so, I would say, okay. There's definitely some a lesson here, and there's definitely some some discernment because, you know, I'm not a peace, and whatever I seem to do, no matter what I try to send love and light or whatever, you know, it's like it's just like in my face. It's not going away, and it it actually helped me as I started to travel around and go to course groups uh, around the United States and and even into groups in other countries, was I kind of got a broad perspective of of course groups, of, of people going through struggles in relationships, in job situations, feeling stuck in geographical climates and stuck in horrendous conditions. And I would be looping around going, we'll say year after year. So sometimes I go to a course group and the people, would, one person would say, you know, I'm in a horrific relationship. I'm having, or I'm having the hell of a time with this one person. And it's, it's just driving me absolutely crazy. But, I know the Course tells me, all I have to do is change my mind. <laughs> and da 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 da. And then I go back, I come back the next year. How's it going? I'm still in this horrific relationship with this person. And, and uh, it's just intense and it's terrible. But, but the Course tells me, all I have to do is change my mind. Then I come back the next year. You know, I hear it repeat over and over and over, this kind of, this kind of cliché, kind of like, I know all I have to do is change my mind. It's not about the form, it's not about the person, this and this and this. Um, it reminds me a little bit though of, of one time with, with Jesus and Helen Shuckman, and Jesus said to Helen Shuckman, he says, he said to Helen, what do you do when you find yourself in a desert, and Helen was kind of like, was this some kind of riddle, or <laughs> is it riddle, or what's going on? And she's, he's like, what do you do when you find yourself in a desert? And Helen just was like stumped, and finally, she's like, what do I do when I find myself in the desert? And Jesus said, leave. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me explain the context of this. You know, for me, I found too that when I first start getting into this, the Holy Spirit would guide me to course groups and this and this and this. And as you start to go deeper and deeper with your spiritual practice, you just have to really be open-minded and flexible about things in terms of, like I was saying before, you direct me where to bestow the miracles. You know, you know, a lot of times people will say to me, you know, well, I should, I have a difficult situation in my life. We could call this a difficult situation. And they say, I am having a heck of a time changing my mind about this situation. It's just in my face. And no matter what I do and how I try to, to approach it differently, it still keeps coming out like this old Star Trek episode where the ship kept blowing up. They kept looping around and the ship would blow up over and over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And what I would say is that when you have this mindset of thinking, I should be able to accept a miracle and bring peace to this situation. Seems like a pretty reasonable request. When people work with me for years, I will tell them that that situational thinking is part of the problem. That you can never really bring peace into situations. God didn't create situations. Think of it. You think God 
abstract love and light, one day just decided, I'm just going to make up a situation. I've never done one before. Uh, we don't have any situations here in Nirvana and Heaven, but oh, let's, what the heck, let's make up a situation. No situational thinking is part of the problem. You can never bring peace to situations. You can never bring the truth into the illusions. And truth is oneness and situations are the illusion. So you see how deep this goes. You, you can't even bring peace into situations. You have to be so open-minded as to say to the Holy Spirit, you know, okay, you direct me, what, what do you want? And, and believe me, it, when you give that, that devotion to the Spirit, it, it's like a tossed salad. Wow, it does it, everything that you think is your life is going to turn into a tossed salad. You know, I didn't ask you to <laughs> take away what? this relationship and this, my house, my, my, my country, my life, my dog, my cat, you know, it's like, you know, you can start to pray to the Holy Spirit, you know, heal my mind, and then all of a sudden, things can really start to, to disappear, to turn away. I had times when I was working with particular course groups, and, and if somebody came that wanted to, like, socialize, or seem to get off onto all kinds of tangents and this and that, or a friend or relative, you know, you know the kind that like to call you up and just bitch and moan for an hour. Hi, how you doing? Ah, the bitching and moaning begins. You can't, you can't even get a word in. So after a while you have to start to realize that, that these are thoughts. These aren't people. These are thoughts. You've got a person in your life that seems to be driving you crazy. Thoughts. That was, a, that was an interesting lesson for me to learn. What's the lesson? That people aren't people. They're thoughts. And if there seems to be a nagging thought in your mind that doesn't go away, it's because you don't want it to go away. There's some kind of a sick attraction to it. <laughs> I mean, it's sick. It's pretty sick. Of course it's sick. Who would be attracted to suffering and misery? Uh, I remember when I was going through the Course, I was reading one of those sections and it said, Attraction to Guilt. One of those subsections, and I said, oh, it's sick. It's a sick subheading. Who would title the subheading of a chapter, Attraction to Guilt? So I went on to the next section. <laughs> attraction to pain. Oh, that's sick. Who would call something attraction to pain? I read through it, then it was the, last, the next one was attraction to death. What? I'm a death worshiper. Oh man, where is this going? You know, this is the kind of thing that you work with when you work with the Course. You start to realize that there is an attraction, like they say in 12-step programs, you know, to the stinking thinking. You know, there's definitely a, a sick attraction there that has to be discovered. And it's not like you as a person are there to bestow your miracles on this lady or on this course group. It's that this whole idea of, of constructing situations and breaking things off into fragmented bits and pieces like a kaleidoscope and then trying to, to bring love and light into the fragmentation, that is a sick way to go about it, you know, that the Course is saying you cannot bring the truth into the illusion. Just bring the illusions of the ego that you've made up to the light in your mind, to the truth within, and watch how quickly it disappears. And in some cases it will seem to be that you leave. Uh, I remember at one point going, but Jesus, what about my beloved Course in Miracles group? How could they can't make it without me? They'll never make it without me. Jesus is like, oh please. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, it's like, you, you start to realize, it's like, what, where is your inspiration? Where is your joy? If I'd have just stuck with that 
same Course in Miracles group, you know, Gary and Bernard and I were talking uh, with, with his group in Maine and starting off and he said, I was just hacking my way through that group and this and this and this. Then I wrote a book and uh, that nobody in that group ever once listened to me until I wrote this book, Disappearance of the Universe. Then all of a sudden people started listening because you write a book, you know. But it was, we were just laughing because it was like, it was all part of opening to the miracle and letting yourself go where the Spirit would guide you and direct you. In our cases with Gary and I, it's like many, many countries, many, many people that we had never met, many, many blessed holy encounters of love, floods of witnesses from across the, the continents, you know, because simply we're willing to say, use me. And I'm not going to tell you how to use me. You use me, instead of me telling you what the parameters are, what the situations are, what the limitations are. And, and that's part of the turn, that's how things heal. And then, what seem to be difficult situations or nagging people or whatever, as you rivet your mind, as you align your mind with, with the purpose of love and healing and joy, you start to draw forth many, many, many witnesses to that. And those witnesses come in such floods that they basically crowd out the attack thoughts. It's like the attack thoughts are like little twigs and they're trying to float in a sea of love. I'm going under! <laughs> I can't keep attacking anymore, it's just too much love. It's just a swamp of love, you know, coming in. That's, that's how it happens. You can see how different that is from trying to, like, hack it out. Uh, and in many cases, you know, I, I was just guided, guided on and on. And the funny thing is, when you follow your heart and you really, you go where you're guided to go, when you really go for it, then sometimes, some of what seem to be those old witnesses show up again and they are changed. Like, my God, this is beautiful. I've had hecklers come, so-called, what well, the world would call hecklers, to gatherings where they kind of heckle and heckle and heckle. And I just let the Spirit just pour, pour, pour through. Sometimes by that very afternoon or the very next day, they're like sitting in the front row with a pet taking notes. Wow, what a shift. You know, it's just the power of the mind to not yeah. hold on to those thoughts. Thank you. Yeah, it works. I'm not that for you. <laughs>